What's up guys, what a night, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I slept through all of it, but overnight, iOS 11 Gold Master, the GM, has been leaked, and at this pace, we're literally not gonna have anything left for Apple to talk about at the event come a few days from now. So let's go ahead and talk about what this means. I mean, Apple briefly leaked the Gold Master version online, which is the finalized version of iOS 11, and then took it down just a little while ago as soon as it got some traction, people began installing it, but while it was installed, a lot of the developers Developers dug through it and found a lot of new features for the iPhone 8, design stuff, gestures, just overall how it's going to work, even a couple new products, AirPods 2, the Apple Watch 3, there's so much to talk about, so many little tiny things that we didn't know about before. So let's go ahead and talk about all of that in this one video. Now surprisingly, in a very strange move, instead of taking away all of the existing wallpapers, Apple added 17 new ones and these are very beautiful. So take a look at those. I can't show them to you on a device because I didn't get a chance to install the gold master on your device uh, apple stopped signing it almost immediately but these look fantastic i really love the retro ones it has this awesome old Apple vibe to it. So I can't wait to get those on the official device, but these are gonna look really, really good on the iPhone 8. So the iPhone 8 design with the cutout up top is actually leaked again in the iOS 11 beta. So this was originally leaked in the HomePod firmware. Now we get a look at it again in several different icons and glyphs. And there's one that also references pressing the power and volume up at the same time to activate SOS mode because the power button is going to be getting some different functions. It's gonna have a different way to install that. Either way, pretty cool confirmation again that the design we knew is happening in just a few days here. And the final naming for the iPhone lineup has been revealed within this code as well. So we've got the iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, and the iPhone X, which is contradicting an earlier report we just heard about the final naming. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the real one is. This isn't set in stone, but it was found within the code of iOS 11 GM. So it's hard to argue that this will be the naming of the device. Definitely wouldn't have preferred iPhone X, would have liked something like iPhone Pro or iPhone Edition, honestly, uh, to set it apart, but I guess that works as well. And the status bar itself, how it's going to look has been leaked. So these are screenshots showing the cutout up top there, the curvature, this is one-to-one, -one, the real deal. There's also very, very cool animation when going into charge. So it completely replaces the airplane mode, whatever else you had there with the charging indicator. It's a very swooping, smooth animation there. I really like that. And as we learned before, it will be adaptive. So it'll change. And according to what you're doing, it'll show different things because there's not a lot of room there. So Apple has to work with these adaptations and transitions to better present you with your information up there. Also, you know that red or blue bar up top when you're recording your screen or you're using Google Maps, and you've got that location tracker. Now it'll be presented in a little glyph on the top left instead of taking over the entire status bar. So a cool little subtle change there as well. And the home button bottom bar, which is gonna be gesture based, is real as it has been revealed in this firmware code as well. And this is what it looks like. Previously, it was reported on that it would be there and there was a mock-up, but this is the actual look at it. And as you know, this will be replacing the home button entirely with gesture control and everything like that. And this is actually how the keyboard will look on the iPhone 8, not too different. I noticed that they actually pushed it up a little bit to make it easier for your fingers to reach, so I like that. It's going to be very comfort-based, and with that bottom bar on the bottom, that might be what that looks like. Also confirmed is that the iPhone 8 will be all gesture-based, so instead of having a virtual on-screen home button, you'll just have swipes. Swipe to go up into the control center, go up into the app switcher, or with all the way push, you'll go back to the home screen. So there will be a lot of gesture-based stuff, and now it's been actually confirmed from within the code. There's also a new portrait light mode. Now this will go into beta very likely at the beginning, but it uses some sort of flash and light manipulation to give different effect while taking pictures using the portrait mode. So the portrait mode is going to get a lot smarter with the iPhone 8, but likely will still be in beta. And the actual video capabilities of the iPhone 8 have been leaked. It'll be capable of 4K at 60 frames per second, that was earlier predicted, as well as slow motion 1080p at 240 frames per second. That is awesome. It'll also have a new film mode, so 24 frames per second. That's going to be very interesting to see. Also, the camera application on the iPhone X will be getting some changes as well. For one, the UI will change to accommodate for that larger display. It'll actually be stretching as the developer points out. And also when you take a picture, there will be a nice haptic feedback using the new Taptic engine. So that's gonna be kind of cool. Little tiny one, but revealed in a video, there's a new loading indicator. So when you're streaming video and it's loading, instead of that old rotary bar or circle, now you get a new little swiping dot, left to right, left to right, 
and it looks really neat. I definitely like that. The True Tone display feature from the iPads has been confirmed to make it to the iPhone where sensors will change the display according to your environment to give you the perfect color temperature. Unfortunately, there was no reference of whether or not ProMotion will be happening. So I'm still holding out to hope that that will be making it to the iPhone. I think that'll make it a complete game changer, honestly. Someone will pick up an iPhone, it'll be so smooth, so fluid, it would be insane. But who knows if that's a viable battery life-wise. Now, Face ID naming has been confirmed. So Pearl ID, as it was referenced to within the code, will be called Face ID, replacing Touch ID on the new iPhone. Also, the setup interface for Face ID has been leaked. There's a new glyph there, a new animation when you actually authenticate correctly, but the developer says this won't display every single time you unlock your phone. It'll likely not even have a visual like this. It'll just unlock automatically. So that's kind of cool, but that has been leaked, Face ID. And this one is quite interesting. New and emoji have been leaked. So animated emojis and emojis, uh, as they call it, have been shown in the code for the new iPhone. This will actually be based on your facial expressions. You'll get recommended ones right there. If you're angry, if you're happy, you'll get certain ones to send. And there's a bunch. I mean, there's even a smiling poop in there. <laughs> there's a heart. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. So that has been shown in the code as well. And yes, just as predicted, the power button will be getting a lot smarter. A hold will invoke Siri. A double tap will bring up Apple Pay payments on the lock screen. So this thing is basically going to be the new home button for the iPhone. It'll be adaptive. It can change with what you do. And there's actually a whole new menu for accessibility settings just for this guy. You will be able to customize the control as well. And in these new accessibility settings, you'll be able to do things like enable type to Siri, also change the speed at which you can double tap or triple tap the button to do different things. And also the whole attention feature thing where your phone can see if you're looking at it and what you want to do with that. If you want your phone to kill the phone when you're not looking at it anymore, you'll be able to control all of that within the accessibility settings. And moving on to a report from Ming-Chi Ko that just happened last night. He said that the new iPhones will not have a white border. So for those of you that really did not like this look, it will not be happening. All three colors for the iPhone will be coming with a black border to blend with the organic LED display. And also because Apple couldn't really get the inking right, the paint inside of the uh, glass. So they're not doing the white regardless for both of those reasons. And back to the iOS 11 Gold Master. So the Apple Watch 3 LTE has been leaked and it looks pretty slick. I'm liking that. Now in the crown, the digital crown, you can see that it has been filled in with a color and I'm sure that color will change depending on which color of the watch you get. But that is pretty cool. It might be an antenna for the LTE. It might represent that that's an LTE phone. And the interesting thing is that Tim Cook was seen wearing this very same style in an interview a long time ago. So he's been very obvious about testing that in public as we didn't know, we just thought it was a custom based Apple watch. And there will be two new colors for the Apple Watch LTE, there will be a blush gold matching this one on the iPhone 8, as well as a ceramic gray. Also, both of those will be available in the sport model. So that is pretty cool. Overall, though, it looks pretty similar to the old one, very same form factor. I didn't notice much of a difference. It doesn't look slimmer or anything, but that's good. I, I like the form factor. I really don't think a round Apple Watch would make as much sense. And an actual screenshot from the Apple Watch 3 LTE model has been leaked, showing the new icon for the iPhone in the Apple Watch control center, as well as a signal bar for LTE. And the actual way LTE is going to work has been revealed in some code as well. You will actually have to pay for it with your carriers, but at first it's been referenced that you might get free trial to test that out and in sync with your iPhone. So you're actually going to get the same phone number for both devices and they will be able to work independently. So you don't have to have one or the other to answer calls or messages. And super cool, there will be new AirPods. I don't know if this will be an AirPods 2 type of deal or just a very small updates to the AirPods, but there is a slight change so new animations have shown the design of the casing for the AirPods and the charging indicator is now on the outside, not on the inside of the case. A very small change. Uh, I like it. It is a good one because it shows you when your device is charged or not or charging without having to open the casing. You know, it looks good, but will there be any other change? We don't know. The actual naming for the AirPods has changed from 1.0 to 1.1 internally, meaning it could be a pretty big hardware revision, something maybe like better battery life, better range, uh, better sound quality. Who knows? We'll have to see. And these images shared from within Foxconn. Apparently, these are crates and crates full of the new iPhone 8. Stare longingly, but soon they will be in our possession. So apparently pre-orders will start on Friday the 15th, but the iPhone 8 will be shipping at a later time. And that time has not been given at this moment. So very likely in October, the iPhone 8 will start shipping. It's not apparent either if you can pre-order it at the time, same time as the iPhone 7S or 8 and 8 Plus models. All right, guys, so there it is. This video was not one I was expecting to make. This is a big, 
big mess up on Apple's part. Again, leaking something so big, uh, taking a lot of luster off of their keynotes in just a few days here. But in any case, it'll be in how they tell the keynotes and how they uh, sell this thing to us. That'll be the interesting part to see, even though we know almost everything about it right now. Super cool, guys. Uh, this was this was a fun year in leaks, really, like how it evolved, how it changed, how we learned all of these things. And for the haters, for the doubters, you guys will see in a few days that almost everything was correct. After all, there's a lot of truth in leaks. Anyways, thanks for uh, sticking with me on this series. Can't wait to start it for the next iPhone, but uh, it was a good run, guys. All right. Peace. Oh, and guys, I wanted to give a shout out to Apple iDesigner for continuing to provide me with all of his awesome concepts. So this is a great run with this guy. He's done very well. Uh, if you want, go follow him for the release of new Apple products and iPhone 9 down the road.